What is going on YouTube? Bryce Builds It All, your favorite AMPIA and Part 147 instructor. Uh, back again, this time we are continuing our install on the JPI EDM 900 for the Cessna 172 project. And the main goal for the day is going to be to figure out where on earth I'm going to put all of this. So stick around. All right, if I pull this unit out, um, you can see on the back, it's got P1, P2, P3, P3 at the top, which is weird, P4, and then this is P5, and this is my remote alarm light. So I'm gonna start by setting this out of the panel, out of the way. Obviously I have a lot of harnesses. Here's P5, here's uh, P3, they're all labeled, which is nice. Here's P6, also labeled, and then I got P2, uh, P4, and P1. Now, here's the hard part. At least one of these, and I actually think it's this one, has some options wired into it. So I have to look at all the wiring diagrams and figure out uh, which one of these has the options for like the carburetor temperature, uh, manifold pressure, and some of those. So I'm gonna start by looking at the wiring diagrams and figuring that out and getting those pinned in the connectors that they're supposed to be in so that I can then start running all the wires. Okay, good news. So I, I do apologize for the wind, but I got good news. Um, everything does go in the P1 connector. It says J1, but it's allegedly it's the same. So start by getting this open. I will get this out of here. And then I just very gently need to pin all of these. The oil temperature sensor, which was, I just had an oil temperature that goes in one and two. Um, the carb temperature goes in five and six, and then my outside air temperature goes in 14 and 15. And I don't know if it's gonna focus, but you can actually see those numbers across the back. So it's just a matter of finding those pins and pinning them in there where it tells you to. Again, sorry for the wind, but there you go. There's these three um, installed. They're all pretty much pinned up on this side over here. Follow this, it'll tell you oil temperature, uh, yellow in one, red in two. Then it'll come down to carb temperature, yellow and five, red and six, and then of course outside, red and yellow in there. Take your time, do them one at a time, make sure they're pushed all the way in. They've already, when you order these from JPI, they've already got the uh, pins on them. So all you have to do is stick them in there and pin them down. And then it's just a matter of building the switch back up. So we'll take the screws back out of here. I'm gonna put this in first. I will center the heat shrink. Get this started. Again, like I said, get this centered up so that it looks pretty. Make sure you got plenty of room there. Go ahead and run these down. They don't have to be super tight, but they need to be tight enough to hold the harness. You don't want them flopping around. Okay, so that is that. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. That is the first plug done. So I'll get this put in. I'll go ahead and get all these put in and start running wires on where they need to be. So first things first with running wires, I'm gonna go ahead and get all the temperature stuff done first because that is the easiest. Uh, the P2 harness, this is all of the CHTs and EGTs for the six cylinders. And then obviously this is the main power supply. So this is power and ground for the unit. And then these are, you know, oil temperature, carb temperature, and the ones that I just pinned out and labeled. So I think I'm gonna put y'all maybe underneath the panel. This might be a cool angle never before seen on the Bryce Builds It All YouTube channel. Maintenance from behind the panel. That's what a, that, that would be a, a good title for some, some videos. I could do some behind the panel and it's, it's just me working on this kind of stuff. You know, it's the, the behind the scenes. Maybe that's what I could call the memberships for my channel. If y'all didn't know, I uh, launched memberships for my channel, so. If you want to become a member, you can. There's not a lot of uh, benefit to it currently, except for a couple of knick-knack videos here and there. So, But, you know, it, if you become a member, all of that money will go to people who are trying to get their AMP certificate and 
giving back to the community, as they say. So I'll show you where I put that over here. Let me see here. I'm trying to reach through the glove box here. So I think I will put, so I think I'll put the rest of the engine sensors in the other firewall location. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out. Um, this obviously is not going to fit, no matter how hard you try. There's just no way, oh, well, it might. Um, but I am gonna have to get a Caterpillar or something for this, or maybe like a grommet for it at work, so. I'll get one of those for this, but in the meantime, I'm just going to close this up so that it's kind of holding the wires in place. There we go. There we go. Yeah. And like I said, I'll get a caterpillar for this so that that's not chafing. Okay, I'll try not to shake it too violently, but now we got this harness. This is a P3. This has got RPM. I already kind of the RPM sensor through there because it was really snug. Um, it's got RPM, uh, manifold pressure, and oil pressure. So I'll get this one. I'm going to use this bottom bottom hole for everything else because the one that the CHT's EGT's in, if you see, it's already kind of full. So. so I do have most of the harnesses run up to this point. Um, this one I'm not putting in yet because this is basically just for the the fuel transmitter and amps and I'm probably going to end up just putting the shunt right back here on the firewall. So I'm going to snap my fingers and I'm going to have the unit in here and everything plugged in and everything zip tied back here behind the panel and then I'll show you what that looks like. So looking a lot better. Um, I still need to sort of secure this a little more this way. I might get a little more slack out of it and pull it closer in because um, what I'm worried about is that yolk right there. I don't want that yolk um, to hit it. So I need to find a way to secure the whole harness. I'm trying to get the camera in here. Find a way to get the whole harness kind of over here out of the way and pulled close enough this way. Um, this is for the amp meter. I'm going to go ahead and put the, the shunt is what they call it. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the shunt right back behind here where the old amp meter was because I don't really want to modify the, uh, the the original wiring harness, at least as little as I have to. These are the wires for the original fuel senders. There's power. Um, this one here is a little jumper that goes from left to the right. And then that one obviously goes up to the, to the right gauge. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and try to get the fuel gauge harness in it. This is for the size fuel cinders. This is the last harness I need to run. So I'll take this out, I'll take this out, and then I'll figure out how to run that. Okay, I've got those run. Um, other side's the same. I had to leave this one on just because the lamp is attached to it. And I didn't want to take it off, but this is the wire for the size fuel cinder. This is actually the outside air temperature wire. They're just running kind of behind the panel up the B-pillar, inside the wing root, and then up to the tank. I think this is a power wire, so I'm going to call JPI and see if I can reuse that. Um, if I can't reuse it, as in use the aircraft's existing electrical system for it, I'll read their instructions before I call them. But if I cannot reuse that, um, then I'm still going to use it. I'm just going to bring power off a 5 amp circuit breaker here and tie into them here rather than running a whole new wire just to power the size units. Um, but yeah, we'll look more into that. So. That's probably going to do it all for this video. I realize these are kind of short, but I'm trying not to overload them with a whole bunch of details and a whole bunch of work. There's also a lot of things that I'm not uh, showing on camera. If it looks easy, it's because I didn't show you me sitting 
here scratching my head for about 30 minutes trying to figure it out like I had to with the exhaust gas temperature probes. So I wouldn't caution you, caution you against uh, a JPI. Definitely worth some money just for the peace of mind and knowing what your engine is doing. Um, but I will tell you, it is a pain in the ass. So anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And as always, go build something and be easy.